Good morning, shaving cadre. I'm having one of my rare morning shaves. Uh, Lukey3262 here um, from the shavingcadre.com. Um, friends, welcome to my shave. Uh, this morning I'm going to be shaving with uh, CBL's Dragon's Milk shaving soap. Uh, I've also got the matching um, post shave elixir aftershave elixir, which is wonderful. I love the scent. Um, for those of you that have used this soap, you know it's got a wonderful scent. It's got, it's it's all that, that bourbon-y, beer, vanilla, uh, I mean just all those warm luxury scents just kind of all built into one. I love it. Uh, the soap is a bit soft. Um, I know that the process to make this makes it a little soft, so it's much more like a uh, cream than it is a soap. It's a crope. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd be interested to see what happens whenever it ages a little bit more, if it gets a little harder. But uh, right now, you just dip the tips and you're in good shape. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut up and shave, get started. And I've been uh, soaking my shaving cadre exclusive uh, Saponifico Veracino. Um, shaving brush. Uh, so, uh, beautiful brush. The, br the cadre got us a while back, or rather we bought through the cadre a while back. Um, but like I said, I mean, I just barely hit this one with the tips until it just starts to load up a little bit. And we're probably overloaded right there. So I'll go ahead and get started. On the home front, we've had some excitement with my little boy lately. Um, uh, just the other day, he uh, um, he put a rock up his nose for the first time, uh, and hopefully the last time. That scared him pretty good. Um, and uh, luckily, it came out before we ended up having to go to the doctor. Um, and then he notified me later in the evening that there was another small rock up there that he did not tell us about. And so, oh, just looking for a second, I got the tweezers and I got it, got it. So, no problem. Um, the uh, uh, the kid, the poor kid, he ended up with um, hives last night. Um, we're not certain what the, uh, what happened with that, where it came from, but, he had hives all over his legs. He complained. He was complaining about his legs itching last night, or not last night, but yesterday. Whenever I picked him up from school, he said, "Daddy, my legs are itching." And I said, "Okay, buddy. Well, we'll uh, change your pants when we get home." And they were a brand new pair of pants that we just washed the night before. And uh, so, anyway, uh, we get home, and he said, "Daddy, my legs still itch." I said, "Okay, well, let's get." Let's get your pants off. Took his pants off and oh my goodness, he had hives all over his legs. Um, and they weren't the, the little pimple ones, they were the bigger ones. They kind of look like big mosquito bites. But uh, anyway, we, uh, we called the pediatrician and the pediatrician said, well, we had uh, a, uh, I guess some cortisone left over from one of his other visits to the doctor for, um, well, I think, I think he had some eczema or something. Uh, and so we put that on it and it calmed it down. And then he, he had it on his other leg and, um, and uh, on his butt and his back a little bit. And anyway, well, we, uh, <laughs> I ended up running out at, uh, oh, I think it was about 10:30. I had we live now we live uh, in Hillsboro. We're uh, about 15 minutes from the local 24-hour uh, drugstore. Uh, so ended up um, running to to Festus, uh, and of course the drugstore was closed, but Walmart was open, which I hate going to Walmart. But oh well, for my son. Uh, so it was about 11, 11, 
30 ish maybe whenever I got home I don't I don't really know um, and anyway he he had just woken up from itching and uh, gave him some Benadryl and he was good to go so anyway poor guys had it rough he didn't sleep well last night and he got up this morning most of most of the hives were gone he was in much better shape um, and, uh, hopefully he's okay at school. Uh, you know, it's all, you never know, you know, um, you take the whole day off and go in and, or take part of the day off and go in and have the pediatrician tell you, whoop, pardon me guys, um, my box setup is, a little unstable this morning. Um, you know, you go in and take him in and the pediatrician says, well, just keep doing what I told you to do last night. Or you take him in and they figure it out. But, you know, we gave him a bath. We wiped him down. We did all of the things that you know to do. But we'll, we'll see. Hopefully he's, uh, he's good this morning. We gave him a little bit more Benadryl before he went to school. And he, he was fine. He wasn't complaining about the itching or nothing. But hopefully... It clears up, but the CBL uh, lathered up beautifully, nice and soft. The razor today, the hardware today, um, it is a FW Ingalls uh, wedge. It is the Warren Velvet Velvet Edge wedge. Uh, I'm shaving with this particular razor for a friend of mine on the Shaving Cadre uh, Novice Wet Shaver. Um, I don't know if he's still a novice, but uh, he was, he's been asking a lot of questions about straights and, uh, he wanted to know about wedges, how they shave and how they sound and, and he's considering picking one up. So I told him I'd shave with a wedge tonight. Uh, I tuned this guy up on my Ancient Ocean Jasper, uh, hone, um, which I picked up from, uh, realwetstonesharpening.com or maybe I might have to look that up and put the link in the description, but I'll go ahead and get started and I'll talk about wedge blades a little bit. Okay, so I wanted to be quiet for that first little bit. For one, so I don't cut myself with this freshly tuned up edge. And uh, also, so that you can listen for a sec and hear that this edge, in fact, on a wedge is much quieter, much less feedback. Yeah, like you'll hear, whenever I shave with a full hollow blade, you're gonna hear a lot of feedback. You're gonna hear scraping. It sounds like you're scraping uh, toast, uh, butter on toast. Well, this, you can't really hear it near as much. Um, and she already nicked me a little bit. <laughs> I've got, I got a little pimple or something going on right there. I've never had the best skin, but whatever. Um, so here we go. Velvet Edge is a great way to put it for this razor. I mean, it's it's got a nice smooth edge, very comfortable. It doesn't feel like you're riding the lightning with it. Um, I did give it a bunch of laps on the Jasper till it stuck, so it is very sharp. But it it doesn't feel overly keen. It doesn't. It's not hurting. It doesn't feel like you know harsh. As I was telling Novice Wet Shaver yesterday in a private message,
As before mentioned, wedge blades are much more quiet when you shave. Um, they can be a little bit less uh, forgiving when you're shaving with them, and particularly that's because the 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 on a hollow ground razor you have the edge that's flexing, and as it's flexing, it's deflecting from your skin, and you're not getting as you know you're not having the chance of cutting yourself quite as well. Whereas this baby, it doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, flex in it at all. And if you make a mistake, you're gonna dig it into your face. So, I mean, that's why a lot of people got into liking hollow ground razors. And by the end of the 1800s, The great majority of all razors made were hollow ground. Now I will say that there are some distinct advantages, I believe, I believe, with using a wedge blade. Um, one of them being, for me particularly, and this might be your mileage may vary issue, If I'm shaving every day, my, my stubble comes in really thickly, thickly, very thick. Um, and so with it coming in thick and it's super short, it's very tough. So using a wedge blade, um, I find that uh, if I'm shaving daily and I use a wedge, I seem to get a better shave. I kind of enjoy it better. Um, now on the regular, I'm shaving probably every other day, usually. Um, I, I do get in kicks where I shave every day, but with working from home, Unpacking, working extra in the evenings. Uh, it, it does seem like um, the days get away from me, so every other day is pretty common for me. But now, back to wedges. Um, one thing to consider if you're wanting to pick up a wedge is, or a near wedge, and we can discuss that as well. Um, they do take a little bit more, oh, it is a little bit harder to um, um, hone them. But that's only because you're having more of the actual razor lay on the hone. Um, and then also a bunch of these razors that you're getting, the old old wedge blades, they're going to be a bit harder to hone because they've got some wear on them. And if it's a quarter hollow or near wedge and they've got some hone wear on them, well, the thing is, the more of that razor that's laying on the hone, the bigger the bevel you're gonna have on the apex and on the spine. So I'm not a professional honer, um, but I can say I can say from experience, it, it, it takes some time. Um, a lot of people end up taping the edges. So that you can get to the edge a little quicker.
But the problem you run into whenever you're taping is you're throwing off the geometry of the blade. And eventually, if you tape all the time, and this is your mileage may vary because there's some people that just 100% tape all the time. But if you're gonna be using the razor for many years and you continue to tape, you're gonna make that edge more obtuse. And the more obtuse it becomes, then you're gonna to have to really lay it to the hones to uh, take out that edge wear, or the, the, to, to reprofile the spine. Silent whisker killing action. Now, Now, I will say with these old wedges, near wedges, near wedge objects, um, quarter hollows, half hollow, half hollows aren't really there, but the quarter hollows, you're looking at, you know, like I said, these old ones, you've got a lot of wear on some of them. They may have been used by a barber or they may have been used by a father and then handed down to his son and used it. And they just, you know, they, some of these things could have been used for 50 to 100 years, I mean, back then. Um, could have been handed down several barbers, you never know. But, you know, some of them, they have so much wear that it's just so much easier to just tape it. And then you can get to the edge and you're done. I mean, again, for one or two honings, that's fine. But if you're honing something and sending it to someone, you got to tell them, hey, this is how many layers of tape I use. This is the type of tape I use so they have an idea where it's at. Otherwise, they have no idea how much tape you put to, uh, to get these things going. Now, um, barbers like to choose the wedge blades. Um, and of course, Barber Dave or uh, Handle Barber Dave maybe correct me here. But uh, my understanding is that barbers enjoyed using wedges because they held their edge a bit longer. They were harder to break. I mean, you could still damage an edge, but you know, you drop it at the likelihood of a wedge breaking as opposed to a full hollow breaking is much smaller. Um, the, these blades, you could use them all day long. They do need stropping, but they might not need to be honed quite as often because that edge is a bit more robust. Granted, at the apex, it's not as robust, but it, it does have more, it's, got, it's a bit more substantial. And you're going to be wearing it down a bit slower, too. Smooth, smooth. Now, on everyone's straight razor journey, I mean, you just gotta see what works for you. I mean, you don't really know 
if a if a wedge near wedge quarter hollow is going to work for you you don't know what your experience is going to be and you know you really just got to expose yourself to it um and i'm going to just put this out there a lot of people seem to believe well you need to go out and buy the latest brian brown or a corad or 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 whatever the, the, the popular maker is right now to get the best razor. This FW Ingalls, it's probably from the 1940s, I'd say. Well, let me, let me look. It says New York on it. I mean, it could, it could be earlier than that. Um, may have just been used within the United States only, so they didn't put the country of origin, which would tell me a little bit more about how old it is. But, you know, I, I just personally, I'm, I, I'm all about the vintage razors. Yeah, you're going to find some that are turds, but the great majority were made while there were hundreds or thousands of other cutlery companies back in the day trying to keep up with demand, and they were trying to outperform each other. So you got to the point where you had these companies that were producing absolutely fantastic blades okay um so you're looking at vintage razors most of them are good most of them are good i mean granted the early uh de's they were still figuring it out i mean it was they were great razors but at a point especially back in the early 1900s, the uh, straight razor was still king. Um, they'd been trying to figure out the DE for quite some time before that. Yes, the CBL is not as fluffy right this moment, but it's still very slick. I'd say I could probably have gone with just a little bit more product, but eh, it's fine. What's going on in the shaving cadre? Well, uh, my group of friends, Uh, we've got a, uh, there is a group of us that's been playing Dungeons and Dragons, my first time playing Dungeons and Dragons. And... We finished up our first game. Uh, we've been playing it for, I'd say, at least six months on Tuesday nights. And um, not every Tuesday. We've missed a lot. Um, but uh, we uh, finished that up thanks to our friend Doug. Um, and that's been a fantastic experience. Um, I always thought D&D &D was just for mega nerds, and it probably still is, but... <laughs> Um, I'm a nerd too, and I enjoy that kind of stuff.
All right, check myself over. I think I'm about done. Today is the last day of the Enjoy What You Have 2022 first quarter. You could call it a sabbatical, I guess, as I made the decision earlier in Jan earlier in or late in December not to make any shaving-related purchases for the first three months of the year, um, it being March 31st. We're just about done there. Um, I have been trying a lot of stuff within my, um, within my den that I, I, uh, I haven't honestly touched in forever. Um, and so it's been a good experience for me. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I haven't missed out on some stuff, which that's the point. touch up my mystical spots anyway um, but yeah that's over with um, I'm not thinking and not planning on going crazy buying a bunch of stuff by any means um, granted it's in my nature to uh, kind of over buy um, typically mostly having to do with vintage straight razors uh, and vintage shaving soaps, but I think I'm gonna sit tight and enjoy what I have for a little bit longer. Um, I uh, I was considering um, picking up a few special items, and of course, if I see any Williams mug soap out in the market, I'll probably buy some more of that. But I have plenty of that, I guess. My uh, wonderful mother. She um, found me, I think, 22 Williams Mug Soaps, uh, enough probably for my lifetime. Um, and yeah, so uh, I'm probably set, but um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and finish up with a little Thayer's Lavender. Still can't find my favorite cucumber. I've, I, I've started unpacking the den. But I just haven't quite gotten there. I need to do a separate video just about wedges and about different razor grinds. Um, I just was thinking, it's like, yeah, you know, I discussed it a little bit, kind of the history a little bit, and you saw the shave. It was much quieter. It was still a nice, smooth shave. Uh, but, you know, I, I mean, I could get into, you know, pictures and things like that later. I'm sure other guys have done that, or maybe I'll find a video and we'll link to that. But that, that'd be kind of cool to talk about. Um, okay, uh, so I got my witch hazel. Good and dry down. Now we're going to hit the uh, dragon's milk aftershave. By the way, if you've never tried CBL's uh, post-shave elixir, you are missing out. Um... I'll never forget, the first post-shave elixir I had from him was actually a bespoke item. He created um, the aftershave, or the, the shaving soap and aftershave hello, based off of Inigo Montoya, which that's been my avatar for years and years and years. He created that for me, and I'll never forget, I tried that, so that, that elixir, and I said, holy s, oh my gosh. This is amazing. I mean, the face feel that the stuff gives you is just amazing. Um, totally calms down any, any um, irritation, uh, leaves your face just feeling refreshed and conditioned. I, I love it. By the way, this and the, the aftershave on this is just 
amazing. It just it has a fantastic scent. I mean, go out and check it out. CBL is one of uh, uh, the artists and vendors at um, the shavingcadre.com as well. Please, um, if you will, check out my friends, um, Handle Barber Dave, Rich Shaves, Scuttle Soap, um, Bill M, um, Long Haul Tanker, and a few others. Uh, we're all with the Shaving Cadre. We like to shave together on, in videos. Please check out the shavingcadre.com. We're a great forum. We get together, we talk, we, we chat, we laugh a lot, and there's tons of other options to talk about, you know, not just straight razor shaving, there's sumo, there's there's eating, we've got the weight loss challenge, which we're gonna weigh in for tomorrow. But yeah, it's it's a, it's a great forum, come, come check us out. And please like and subscribe. Uh, I think that's it for today. Well, I think I might throw on just a little bit of balm. How about that? How about that? I hadn't even put any thought into it. How about, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna do Aquavella Sensitive. Just a little bit. Don't really need much balm. I mean, the uh, CBL is not a balm in itself, but it really conditions the skin well. Don't really feel like I have to have a balm. But, you know, I like a little extra. Why not? There we go. So, until next time, uh, I guess I'll shave, you to, shave with you later. Uh, have a great day.